Hey Steelers Nation, it's Joe Rocky with the Pittsburgh Syndicate coming at you. Training camp starts today. In this episode, we're going to break down something that the legendary former Steeler broadcaster Tunch Ilkin said that was so true when he said it, the power of it today, and why I believe we're going to win week one because of it. What Tunch said was a very important observation was that the NFL got itself in trouble and it's a natural problem of having the desire of not getting sued by its players but still wanting to make quality product on the field and through their changes of the cba of not allowing as much contact during training camps and limiting what teams can do and the slow incubation days as a result there has been less hitting during practices and less physicality overall now, they do allow a gray area, and this is one of the things Tunch always said that was great about the Steelers here, that you can choose how physical you want to be, right? And we are lucky, so blessed Steelers Nation, to have Tomlin being the one in charge of this, to have the mentality of being physical in your training. And the reason for this is there is evidence as you look across the NFL the teams that do not treat practice with intensity, hitting and tackling, tend to have very poor records in the first three weeks. And I'm starting to specifically about our week one opponent this year, the San Francisco 49ers. John Lynch, the Niners GM, just said that Purdy got approval to participate in practice, but is going to have a limited workload. Said another way, they're not going to be putting him through the rigors of training camp as a young quarterback, which will dramatically hurt his long-term regression, which is a San Francisco problem. Specifically about the Steelers, it means that we're going to be playing a quarterback who's not used to NFL game speed, is already questionable in terms of his overall talent level, but is going to be trying to hit it fresh to a ground running to a Steelers team that is already going to be used to having their treadmill on eight and the Niners are going to be on three. And when we look at last year's evidence of where this happened across the league, we're one of the examples. Cincinnati did virtually no intense workouts and training during their training camp last year. And yeah, they thought they were just going to rely on Chase and Higgins. Almost worked. I mean, it didn't, but it almost did. But the reason it is because we have superstars too. TJ Watt went insane against them. Why? Their offensive line had not trained and worked together during all of training camp. They went back to making the league softer, as Tunch used to say. And because Tomlin pushes our team across the board, we do the goal line drill every practice with the seven shots. That is so rare in this league. Very beneficial last year because we only scored from six yards out. But when we look at this, it's a tempo and a tone setter. And it's such an advantage. We look at some other teams that did this last year. The Jaguars were one of them. And then week two, they destroyed the Chargers by like 38 points. So having this advantage is huge. Also, the Niners were a victim of it last year. Chicago Bears had two wins. One of them was in week one against the Niners. It's one of the most anomaly wins of the entire season when you go back through it. And it all comes down to this precedent. We are having a training camp that is run by one of the greatest people who know how to do it. Tomlin believes in physicality and winning through brute force. And yes, sometimes that is infuriating when we talk about offensive scheme sets. But in this regard, it is a massive help. And I believe, essentially an indicator, we're winning week one. Yes, they have Bosa defending player of the year. And we're going to be tested about whoever ends up winning the left guard position, whether it be Moore or Broderick. I still have my money on Moore. But when it's all said and done, we have Watt. We have Highsmith, who collectively these could be two of the three best defense of the nfl in week one but who has a better chance the one who's used to running and pushing themselves hard now this does not mean that they're going to play a whole half in the preseason or anything like that it means on their day-to-day training throughout the month of august 
the Steelers are going to be pushing themselves harder than the 49ers. And the one who's used to running harder and digging deeper is the one that wins. So Steelers, I never advocate early action bets, but the Steelers are going to win week one. And I, I am firmly believing in that going through the history and the evidence, not just of this team, but the way that human nature is. There's only so much higher you can push yourself based upon your norm. And the Steelers, every single day this camp, are going to be raising their norm, raising their strength, and ultimately, going back to one of the great Tomlinisms, having iron sharpen the iron. And there is so much great talent on this roster. And I really believe that the Steelers are going to come out of the gate in a much stronger way than the rest of the NFL thinks. The projections we have out there are that we're going to go through the bye and maybe only beat Texas. Uh Uh-uh. We're winning week one, and we're probably beating Cleveland in week two. There's a challenge with that, but with that being said, I I think it's a very real possibility. And with this Steelers Nation, as you're going out to Latrobe, appreciate that the contact that you see out there, you would not be seeing if you went to a Cincinnati practice, if you went to a Carolina Panthers practice, or really three quarters of the NFL. The Pittsburgh Steelers are unique in the fact that we believe in contact. Tomlin allows them to tackle. And yeah, there's a downside to this. Last year, Najee messed up his foot and didn't become real until about week 10. That's a factor. But overall, across the team, it's a team, not a collection of individuals. And so many teams are living in risk of one or two individuals getting hurt that they're holding the rest of their teams back. Tomlin doesn't believe in that. Cower didn't believe in that. And it was all born from Noel, who laid the foundation of this dynasty, of this team. And I believe that that's something that we need to recognize Continuing the legacy of contact, even though we're in a world where they're not, Tomlin can't do what he wants. He's pushing it as far as he can. I think that that's something that's great. And I think that when we look at this all said and done, it's why you know there's a couple of teams that are going to start out with surprising wins. Steelers, Patriots, Baltimore, Seattle. Every year. You know it's going to happen. It's going to happen this year. Steelers are going to win week one against the the San Francisco 49ers, as out West, they will be coddling and babying their roster. Mike Tom will be pushing ours through fire to make the iron sharpen iron. This team is going to be amazing. August is going to be so fantastic. I'm so excited for training camp. Every single thing that we're doing is building a championship. And the fact that we're under the radar, to me, is this a massively great side. Also, by the way, today, they tried to make it a story. It's not one because he had to. Porter did sign his contract, and when Porter learns how to not do his penalties, we're going to shut Cincinnati down. That is how we're going to win this division. Here we go, Steelers. Here we go. 